Welcome, welcome to this week's Angel Messages. I'm thrilled that you're here. My name is Elizabeth Harper from stillwithlove.com and intuitivesoulcircle.com. Before we get started, make sure that you have my Healing with the Angels free course. There are three things your angels want you to know, plus a wonderful meditation that will really help you to connect with the healing vibration of your angels. You know, the angels come in to support you. It's not just for this lifetime. They're not just building the energy for this lifetime. There are many lifetimes beyond yours and beyond your DNA and beyond your, your soul's light that the angels are working with. So call them in and you can use the meditation to do that. You'll see a link in the description. If you're on Instagram, just go to my bio. Otherwise, go to my website, sealwithlove.com, and you'll find it there. Okay, so we are using the Light Seers Tarot today for our messages. And one of the reasons is it's the Scorpio New Moon, and it's Samhain, Halloween. And it just feels like that energy, it takes me back. A long way. I first started using tarot cards when I was, I don't know, 12, 13. I was in my early teens. I don't remember exactly when. And I feel that there is something about the mystery of them. And that's what that Scorpio moon is, isn't it? All about the mystery. So what I'd love for you to do is just place your hands over your heart like angel wings. Invite your angels to guide you to message one, two or three. A message that comes from their heart to yours. Let's call in our loved ones as well. And really focus on their energy and their connection to us. All right, we're going to choose one card for all of us. And then the other three cards I'll choose afterwards. So I'm going to shuffle these cards. These are nice tarot cards, by the way. It's, there's something very gentle about even some of the most gruesome images <laughs> that can come up in tarot. So let's focus on the angelic energy coming through. Let's do that again. I was just thinking about other things. All right. For all of us, the message. <laughs> I love this. The Nine of Cups in the tarot deck is, it's the wish card. It's everything. It, it's whatever you want, you can manifest it. So you see that image? She's saying, woohoo, I've got everything I want. So those cups are just flying up in the air. She's standing on, well, she's jumping from a treasure chest. There is so much treasure there. It's kind of funny because this morning I was tuning in to the energy of the nature spirits and the beautiful vibrations of nature, the elements earth, air, fire, water. And the message that was coming through was that, you know, we are so connected. We are a part of the elements. The elements are a part of us. That everything in nature, everything is controlled by us. Not controlled in a way that we can make it do this or make it do that. And yet, that's exactly how it is except we're not doing it in fear. We're not doing it because we want to control it. We're not doing it because it has to be this way. We're doing it from a place of love. So we're working with the nature spirits from a place of love. And that's the same with this, the treasure chest and, and the cups going up in the air and the joy and, and everything that you wish is there because you create it and you create it in partnership with the nature spirits, with the elements, with the energy of the divine, with your soul, with the light, with love. Cups in the tarot is all about the emotions and love. So this is that number nine as well. We're coming into a nine year, aren't we, next year? That energy, and of course, Scorpio is the eighth house and eight is as above so below we're in an eight year there is just that sense of now is the time to realize your ability to manifest 
It's so important. So look at your life at this time and look at what you're fearing. Certainly, you know, in many parts of the world, there's a lot of fear for one reason or another. So it's looking at what you're fearing as the worst that could happen and focus instead on the best that could happen. And really invite the elements in. Invite those elements to support you, to support the light, to support your vision, your dream, your image of the best that could happen. And imagine all that treasure that is there because you're standing on the treasure. The earth, you're standing on that treasure and you can bring it into reality. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. How does that feel for you? Number one. Number one is the moon. How perfect because we've got this new moon vibration coming up, don't we? With Scorpio. Perfect. So the moon. This particular card, you know, again, in the tarot, this is the number 18. We're in an eight year, add a number one, we get nine for next year. It really feels like the message here from the angels is A, about manifestation, B, about as you think, so you create, and especially with the moon, because it's all reflection. So it's a reflection of your light. So whatever you are putting out there, whatever light you are putting out there, whatever thoughts you are putting out there, it's gonna be reflected back to you by other people, by situations, by events, circumstances, whatever you know is created in your life, it's reflected back to you. And it's coming from whatever the energy is within you. And it's not saying that, you know, if something bad happens to you, that it's because there's something bad within you and you're creating that. Your soul wants to experience certain things and you have, on some level, agreed to experience certain things. So you've agreed to have this incredible joy. You've agreed to have this incredible pain for one reason or another. So when I look at this and I see the reflection, I also get this sense of going into the water because the moon is so connected to the tides, going into the water, going into our own waters, going into that energy of the emotions and just looking at how are your emotions at this time? Are they in an ebb and a flow? Are they in a state of calm, peace? Or does it feel like there is a big gush that is coming up and it's upsetting? So ask yourself, how are my emotions at this time? What do I need to do to really support my emotions? It's not about dampening down your emotions or making them a particular way, but what can you do to support your emotions so that you're in a place of harmony? So you're in a place where you really feel joy and happiness you feel supported so remember that everything is reflected back to you whatever you are focusing on thinking believing within you it's going to be reflected back so that moon energy some aspect of this is also about your imagination can run wild with you so we can have all these thoughts of oh this could be really bad this could be really good. <laughs> this could be really devastating. So we have this thought in our mind and the moon is just saying, all right, what are you creating? How are you making this affect the waters within you? And how can you make those waters within you something in a way that helps you to create externally harmony, peace, joy, love? How does that feel for you? So those first two cards are very connected, aren't they? Number three. Number two. Number two is, I wonder if this is why number three was coming up. Six of Cups. So in the Tower of a Six of Cups, you can see this is a grown man and his dog, but he was a boy and his little puppy. 
It's very much about memory. It's going back. It's good memories. Again, we've got the cups, that emotional energy. It's sort of interesting, isn't it? There's a lot of emotional energy that is coming up here. And you know, our emotions create energy around us, this elemental energy around us. So when we have positive emotions, we create this positive elemental energy. We have negative emotions, that it creates a negative elemental energy around it. So with this, it's such an image of joy, of growth. And you imagine if you have an animal, you know, you can go through ups and downs with an animal and you're, you're teaching them, you're guiding them and you're loving them and they're loving you back. And I feel with this message that's looking at where you've come from how far you've come, how much growth there's been. And there may have been challenging times. And of course, times of great joy, happiness. And it's looking where you've come from and where you are now and recognizing the blessings in your life. So you've built on these memories and you've created these incredible blessings. And it's interesting with this card because as I'm feeling into it, I almost get this sense of, you know, there is loss within here as well. Because we move through with the puppy into the dog. And there's that sense of loss that is coming too. So six is the number of Venus. It's the number of love. We had nine of cups earlier. That nine, it's like the upside down six, isn't it? They're very connected. Nine is Mars. Six is Venus real connection there but I also feel with this that there is so much love but there's also a feeling of well you know there's all this growth there's also going to be transformation and change so I feel that because we're talking about reflections and we're talking about what you think you create it's being mindful of focusing on what will be as opposed to what is it's really focusing on the blessings that are here right now and allowing those blessings to expand so that you have more of what you want even more of what you want even more love even more joy instead of focusing on what is in the future what transformation could be there, what love could be there in future. It's really focusing on the now. So you're creating it in the now. You're creating that love. You're creating that happiness at this time. And not thinking about, but what if I lose it? I feel like that's part of the message here about loss. And it's not being afraid of that loss. Instead, it's creating this enormous energy so that even if you lose something, it doesn't impact you because you have all of this energy that's there. There's going to be a certain amount of impact always with change and loss. And we need to grieve that because we're on the physical plane. But there is this feeling of just having, it's almost like a buffer. It's like a safety net of light and love and being in a place of harmony and alignment with that. So that any change that comes about, we're ready for that and we just breeze through it. Going with the flow. I love that. All right. Let's see what's coming up for number three. Number three. Ah. Number three is the four of swords. So this is a little bit different. So you see she's asleep in, the, in a nest and she has her heart next to her. So the Four of Swords often, a four is about stability. And that sword energy is the mental, the air element. And often you'll see with the Four of Swords that there is, it's like a calm time. It's like a time when time stopped in some respects. Like she is asleep in that nest, she feels safe. She's in a place of... Maybe she's gone from death into rebirth. Maybe she's moving through 
a new birthing time, but she's in a phase of sleep, of rest. So I feel with this that it's saying that it's time to nurture yourself, to look after yourself, to focus on you. So he's not focusing on everybody else. You see, you notice that there's her and her heart in the nest or her, her and a heart in the nest. There aren't a ton of other people in there. It's about her, it's about you. So it's focusing on nurturing, nourishing, looking after you. What I notice with this is that she's wearing red and blue, blue of the sky, red of the earth. So there is a feeling to me of, it's almost like regrounding. It's like restructuring, looking at your life and looking at what you need to restructure. And then there is a sense of planning. I feel like there's planning within here. But it's not planning as in planning and taking action right now. It's more of a case of, all right, so let's plan for this. Let's plan for that. Let's schedule this in. Or, or let's just focus on what we need to build, what we need to rebuild. And you're thinking about it because swords are the air sign and thinking and thoughts and mentality, etc. The intellect. So there is a feeling here of dreaming, of dreaming of your next step, where your heart is, where does your heart need to be, where do you need to put your heart into, what's coming up for you, and it's dreaming about it, but it's not necessarily moving into it, it's just taking that time for it to gestate and grow within you first before it manifests externally. I feel like there's an angel message coming through with this as well. And I feel that it's about growth. There is almost this feeling of, yeah, there is this feeling of, you know, when you're a bud, like a rose, you're a rosebud, you don't want to try and peel the bud because then the rose, it hasn't blossomed the way that it would naturally. It's not as strong as it would be. It's not as beautiful. It's always going to be beautiful, but it's just, it's like it's, it doesn't have the growth that it would do normally. And I feel that the message that's coming from the angels is not to push yourself, is not to, to run before you can walk. It's just to allow that expansion, that growth, that nurturing, it's almost like the word that keeps coming to me is that fermentation. <laughs> so it's, it's allowing it to ferment within you. And then when it's ready, you'll know. Signs will be there. You'll know. And you'll take that step out of the nest, carrying your heart. And it's almost like I get this image of you putting your heart back into your chest and it lighting up. It's like everything lighting up ahead of you. And you'll be ready. I love that. Thank you as always for being with me. I really cherish this time together. Thank you for sharing my work. Thank you for commenting. And I will see you next week. Lots of love to you.